brand new breast cancer science coming your way right now. In this video, I'm showing you exactly what you need to know about a new test designed to detect cancer or a cancer recurrence. If you're a cancer survivor, worried about your cancer risk, or if you love someone with cancer, then listen up. This could save lives. There's new scientific literature showing that a simple blood test can detect circulating cells from cancer tumors. This is known as circulating tumor DNA. It's a very easy way to detect small, fragmented pieces of cancer cells' DNA in your bloodstream. Because if there are really small pieces of a tumor's DNA in your bloodstream, then surely there's a tumor somewhere in your body. Maybe you don't even know about it, or maybe it's too small to pick up on a regular scan. Now, this test has some people in a total panic, including some oncologists. But when it comes to cancer, we need to use the newest science in the best way we can. That's how we save lives. So I'm sharing with you exactly what you need to know about circulating tumor DNA. Now, testing for circulating tumor DNA is not a new concept. Researchers and scientists have been looking at circulating tumor DNA since the 1940s. There's research being completed in all types of cancers, most notably breast cancer, but also prostate cancer, melanoma, colorectal cancer, and non-small cell lung cancer. But first, let me explain to you what circulating tumor DNA, also known as CT DNA, actually is. Here's a refresher of exactly what you need to know. Circulating tumor DNA is fragmented DNA found in the bloodstream. This DNA belongs to cancer cells. Here's what happens in the typical life of a cell. Both cancer cells and healthy cells go through various growth phases before they're eventually broken down by processes known as apoptosis or necrosis. All cells do eventually die and new ones are formed to take their place. It's all part of a normal cell turnover. But when cells die and are broken down, small pieces of their genetic or epigenetic information can be found in the bloodstream. With cancer cells, this genetic information can be linked back to the original tumor. Because a cancer cell's genetic information looks different than the genetic information of a healthy cell. The best part of this really is that it's a simple blood test. It's easy to perform and it's quick to do. Because of this, many researchers and clinicians actually refer to the CT DNA test as a liquid biopsy. Now, a tissue biopsy is considered the preference or the gold standard. A tissue biopsy is what you likely had at the start of your cancer diagnosis. This is pretty standard in diagnosing cancer. Because the CT DNA test is relatively new and not validated in many patient groups, we can't rely on it, so we still turn to the tissue biopsy to diagnose. But there are flaws in the tissue biopsy as well. Sometimes a tissue biopsy can't be performed because it's too close to a vital organ, or the tumor size is too small that we're not able to actually get tissue, or an individual has metastatic or recurrent disease. A cancer survivor that I work with in the Cancer Freedom Program was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer and unfortunately had a recurrence shortly after she finished treatment. She came to me to help with the second part of her treatment. She had the CT DNA test performed prior to the start of her treatment, which did show an elevated tumor marker. She then had the test repeated midway through her treatment, which showed a decline in that number. And finally, when she finished treatment, her tumor marker was zero. Now, this CT DNA test can be used as part of her follow-up treatment, and if it's elevated, actions can be taken. But what exactly do you do if you have an elevated CT DNA test? Well, I'm going to cover that in just a little bit. But there's even more reason why the CT DNA test is useful. A cancerous tumor is heterogeneous throughout, meaning that different parts of the tumor are going to show different tumor markers and look different under a microscope. The makeup of a cancer tumor is rarely the same throughout. So when a biopsy is done on a cancer tumor, we're only getting one tiny piece of that tumor. This is why some studies show that up to 25% of breast cancer survivors actually change tumor subtypes after their diagnosis. And we see this among cancer survivors in our community as well. First thought to be triple positive, then they have a recurrence, which is found to be triple negative. But with circulating tumor DNA tests, there's a better idea of the entire makeup of the cancer tumor. 
This test is also being researched as a broad diagnostic tool, which is really exciting for everyone, not just cancer survivors. For example, the Cancer Seek test is designed to detect eight common human cancer types with just a simple blood draw. This is a quick and easy way to screen for cancer, but this type of test is currently undergoing research and definitely needs to be validated. What that means is we don't want the Cancer Seek test to be inaccurate in either direction meaning that either the test is elevated, making you think you potentially have cancer somewhere in your body, so you undergo unnecessary scans and anxiety only to find out that you have no cancer, or the test is negative and you're relieved and think you're safe, but actually a tumor is growing inside your body. To avoid both of these scenarios, more research needs to be done. But I want to focus more on the use of the CT DNA test in breast cancer. There are a few tests currently available, arguably the most popular is the Signaterra test. And there are a few things you need to know about this. The first is a systematic review that was released in 2020. A systematic review is arguably the highest level of scientific data that we have. What these researchers did is they reviewed all of the available data on circulating tumor DNA in breast cancer patients. When they summarized all the data, they found eight studies. And across those eight studies, they looked at over 700 women. Now, a systematic review looks at all the studies, all patients included. They use statistical analysis to identify trends. And it's a higher level of information because we can summarize all of these studies into one finding. But here is the shocking part. This systematic review found that women with a positive CT DNA test actually had a worse prognosis than those who had a negative test. That means that women who had a positive CT DNA test after they finished treatment actually had a shorter disease-free survival. In other words, they were more likely to have a cancer recurrence. The researchers in this study concluded that you can potentially use a CT DNA test to detect early recurrence or disease progression. Now, a new test came out in just 2023 that looked at a very similar question, but this study was only looking at triple negative breast cancer survivors. They looked at 80 survivors and did a one-time CT DNA test or the Signaterra test when they finished treatment. They found that 33% of patients were positive for the CT DNA. They followed all of these patients for three years and they found that the women that had a positive test actually had a higher risk of recurrence and worse prognosis. The women with a positive circulating tumor DNA test had an 82% chance of recurrence versus the women who had a negative test they only had a 48% chance of recurrence. More research is being done on triple negative breast cancer survivors because this type of breast cancer has a higher risk of recurrence because there's no long-term therapy. But this CT DNA test is not yet standard of care for triple negative ladies because we need to know what to do when you get a positive test. Do patients undergo more aggressive screening or do they start a different type of therapy? Well, that is exactly what the ZEST trial is looking into right now. This trial is enrolling triple negative breast cancer survivors who have completed their treatment. They are followed up using a CT DNA test. And if their test is positive, they get randomized into two different options. The first is they could get put on to another type of breast cancer treatment known as a PARP inhibitor, and the other option is that they could get placebo. Nothing at all. The question that's being researched is that patients with a positive CT DNA test should potentially start treatment as soon as that test is positive, but they're currently enrolling into the ZEST trial, so we'll have to wait and see what these results say. But there's also some literature on using the circulating tumor DNA test on metastatic breast cancer survivors. A study looked at using CT DNA tests to measure response to treatment or disease progression. They found that an elevated circulating tumor DNA marker was able to detect disease progression months before our standard imaging. This is very exciting news for metastatic breast cancer survivors because there's potential to detect disease progression earlier and potentially switch treatments. Now, without a doubt, there are unanswered questions about the circulating tumor DNA test for breast cancer survivors. This test is quite costly. It costs several thousand dollars each time. Now, of course, if it's truly going to improve treatment and guide therapy, then the test could easily be justified. But more information is needed to make sure that it's accurate 
before we use it widespread. What a lot of clinicians are anxious or uneasy about is we're not 100% sure what to do when you get a positive result. If a patient is currently being monitored for disease recurrence and you get a positive result, what do you do? There's really nothing right now to guide whether you should start a new line of therapy or just monitor more aggressively. Or maybe you should just do nothing at all. This leaves a lot of clinicians to say, I'm just not going to order these tests because I don't know how to handle the results. But I completely and totally disagree. The science around breast cancer and cancer in general evolves at such a rapid pace. We don't have all the answers. We may never have all the answers. You have to learn to adapt and use the scientific literature you have right now in the best way you can. Now, if you're the type of person who's always anxious, worried about a cancer recurrence, then perhaps using the circulating tumor DNA test, it's not right for you. If a test comes back positive or elevated, there might be nothing to be done and that could just leave you feeling even more anxious. But based on the metastatic breast cancer literature showing that we can actually detect disease progression months earlier than our standard imaging, I would hope that your clinician would use an elevated circulating tumor DNA test to justify more aggressive monitoring in you to detect a cancer recurrence earlier. If someone has an elevated test, then you'd be more likely to order a CT scan, a PET CT, or potentially biopsy a suspicious area. You want to use all the available information you can to help guide your decision, potentially catch a cancer recurrence, and save lives. But the truth is, is that using circulating tumor DNA tests is about detecting cancer that's already there. But you need to work to help prevent cancer. Go to the root of the problem and stop it there. That's exactly why I'm linking up this next video here on breast cancer myths. Click the link here, I'll see you in the next video.